Hey everyone, welcome once again to Billy Bob Trucking or oh, Let's Drive Euro Truck Simulator 2 Episode 4? <laughs> yeah, 4. Yes. Am I right? Yeah, 4. Okay, yeah. Hmm. Brain failure, not good. So anyway, uh, yeah, last time we left uh, good old Billy Bob and his trucking company. We left Billy Bob on a rating of 3.3 with 2,635 XP, having driven over 2,000 kilometers just, and with uh, 36,000 euros in the bank. So, now it's time to make a decision. Do I want to buy a truck yet? Hmm. I could get a loan and buy a truck, but I might be able to get, eke out a bit more mileage first, and then I can get a bit of a better truck for my money for the money I have. So I'm thinking, do one more job, perhaps see how much money I can earn, and then um, look into buying the truck. So yeah, let's do it that way. So let's go into job market and quick job. Uh, let's see, what do we have? Hey, this price per distance descending. Got a chance to drive that DAF uh, from Kessel uh, to Manchester. Uh, got a Volvo, on, uh, that's 17,000 euros. That's Christmas gifts from Rotterdam to Stuttgart in a Volvo. Um, I'm tempted to see if I can get a different truck that I haven't driven yet, to be honest. Uh, but there's hmm, not really much to choose from at the moment, unfortunately. Um, yeah, Renault. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. John, sod it. Because it's a nice quick job in theory, Castle to Manchester. 22 tons of Christmas gifts in a DAF super space for 17,000 euros. I might be a bit crazy not to pass to take that on, so let's take that job. Boom! Wait, loads. And let's have a look at this load while I think about it. And, oh. Screenshot moment. Oh, oh. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I need to put the seat back, don't I? Accidentally remembered that then. Where was I? Yes. Nice. Uh, let's take a photo. Photo mode. Um. It's that one I want. See, this is kind of cool. He can do this. Uh, field of view. Can I? Mm, boop. Uh, depth of field. That's it. I want the background to be blurred out as possible. I just want just the truck just about in focus. Oversaturate. No. Yeah, so saturate the colours. And I think that's what we'll do. Oh, well, hang on. C and E. I forgot you can do that. You can. Uh oh. Uh oh. Um. I can go slightly on the the piece. Yeah, fuck it, let's go with that. So anyway, let's drive this thing. Uh, F2, put it into drive. Oh yeah, I need to turn my sat nav back on, and let's go. So yes, this video is up a little bit late compared to what I normally put it up as. Um, f fortunately, I have been I was unwell yesterday, which is I normally record these on a Sunday, release them on the Monday. Uh, unfortunately, yesterday I was in bed all day with a bad back. Uh, it's a problem I've had for a while. Uh, at some point, it will go away, hopefully. 
but yeah, I was basically stuck in bed all day. And I'm driving the wrong side of the road already. That was clever. So yes, what a great fun weekend I had, basically in bed. Not very well. Joy. But one thing I have done is I joined um, Squirrel Logistics VTC, uh, which can be done at squirrel-logistics.co.uk, if I'm correct, is the address. Uh, I just submitted my first job for that, which was um, was originally going to be a hundred and something thousand euro job, um, but because I got one percent damage, it came out at ninety nine thousand euros, which was a bit of a shame. I lost like three thousand, four thousand euros for one percent damage. Talk about being trolled by a game, <laughs> but it was fun. Hmm. Let's have a look at this DAF. So, you see, DAFs are unique in the fact they have three, yes, three windscreen wipers. Is three better than two? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, there's one more. So, perhaps indicator sounds are reasonable. That's not bad. Um,. I'm on cruise control at the moment. Oh yeah, I can increase my speed. I didn't realise that. Seems to be pulling alright. I don't know what size engine this one's got. But it's not a bad engine, I don't think. It's one of the things I find with the DAFs. They're not massive engines, but they're torquey. And they have quite a bit of power to them. Which helps with the pulling. And why on that sat nav is it already showing me the destination? Sat nav on dash. That's really weird. Or is it. Oh no. It's the quarry. But the shape of the quarry just made it look like. Or the shape of the entry row for the quarry. Made it look like it was showing me the destination already. Clever. So. I wonder how you lot have been getting on with your driving. Let me know in the comments. Yeah, have you been getting on alright with it? Have you been having problems? You know, have you got the parking down? That is the question. Because a lot of people struggle with the parking. It took me a few attempts to get it right the first time. And now, even now, I still cock it from time to time. But, meh. It's one of those things you kind of get used to doing. You find your own techniques to make it easier for yourself. Or you can keep doing the uh, auto park if you really want to. And to you, part of me thinks sometimes doing the auto park might be kind of okay at the beginning. Um, just until you've got used to handling a truck. You know, you, you, you're handling something with a trailer. You've got to get used to this concept of there's this big long trailer sticking out of the back of your truck you know so until you're used to that concept it can feel a bit alien but once you're used to that parking becomes a lot easier as well so yeah um, now I know I said basically try and avoid taking a back home to buy a truck what I'm really uh, yeah I did say that in a way but one, one of my thoughts is really is basically earn as much money as you mentally can we mentally willing to do in the quick jobs because once you brought your truck yes your truck comes with a full tank of fuel but you've got to drive two pickups you've then got to do the pickups and drive the jobs and that lot and then from then you're responsible for your own fuel um, and you gotta make sure you do the rest stops and stuff and uh, everything so it's nice to get that levels built up plus you gotta pay interest payments on the loan now uh, what I'm gonna do is I've got yes I've got the half million euro loan available to me but I'm gonna take the hundred thousand loan that way um, I can buy a truck truck I can get for like 92,000 euros 
to 110,000 euros. So I'm gonna have more than enough than that to buy that. Then I'm gonna have money to cover any incidents, any police fines or anything, and also to pay for fuel. Until, because, you know, you're looking at quite a few jobs until that truck's paid for itself. So, it, it, it's best to basically have as much money behind you before you buy your own truck, to be honest. And then it makes the game a bit easier. I mean, it can be a bit hair raising when you're doing a job. You're not 100% sure if you've got quite enough fuel to make it to the end, and you have 100 euros to buy fuel with. Yeah, it's not a very nice situation to be in in this game. Or, you know, you have a, you're thinking, oh yeah, I've got 500 euros, I, I need to put in like 300 euros of fuel to finish off to the end of this job, and then I'm getting 70,000 euro, and then you ding a car. That's your 300 euros gone. Or was it 400? I think it's about three or 400 euros gone for dinging a car, because you got trolled by AI. That's it then. You can't, you should, you're worried about finishing the job because you can't buy fuel. So that's why I suggest do as many jobs as you can in the quick market. Discover some of the local towns, which is also useful, and then buy a truck. You'll have more jobs open to you because you've leveled up a little bit. You'll earn some more money for the jobs. You've got the idea of how to drive the truck. Because at the moment, repairs are covered by the um, company on these quick jobs. So any little dings and stuff, the or damage to the truck, the company covers. Whereas when you own your own truck, whenever you have a, a ding with that or a slight accident, you've got to pay for the repairs. So you can kind of see there's an advantage to quick jobs. Right, this is the turning I need for the motorway. And uh, here we go. Driving the good old Christmas gifts. Let's rev it up the hill. I don't think this has the max engine in it, definitely not. <laughs> How much that was struggling up that hill then. But then again, this is 22 tonnes, this load, so it's not a light load. I'm going to start signalling because I want to get out of this lane. I'm going to start creeping over so that car gets the message to back off. And I'm going to try and get up to the cruise of 80 kph. Come on. 73. 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, or oh, 79. 80, sticking to cruise. This will help your fuel mileage, to be honest, doing this. Yes, you could just rev the hell out of it all the way, but you're just going to drink your fuel up a lot quicker. Sticking to cruise, it will handle the fuel for you, no worries. And you're going to try and cut me up, or are you taking an exit? Oh no, he's taking an exit, so that's alright. Um, I'm wondering, can I see... Oh. Uh, one of these gives me wheel arch. I think, it, is it seven? Yeah, I was wondering if I could see the engine size, and I can't. I'm guessing the engine size is on the front of the DAFs, if I remember correctly, actually. So if I get myself in a straight line-ish. Try not to take out that Mini. Even if it's German and not really the Mini. Oh no, can't see engine size, just a DAF XF. Hmm. I'm just intrigued. But it's not letting me see it. Oh, I've got to take this exit. Oh, that was close. I was kind of bit. Oh, I just basically wasn't paying attention then and almost crashed into a car in the outside lane. Now we're off the motorway. Uh, 
Okay, we're getting right of way, which is nice. Come on. There we go. I need to worry about going there. One of the things I kind of wish was in this game, as soon as it sounds, it's like things like police chases and stuff. You know, you're driving along and you hear sirens. Or just literally just police and ambulances going past you. I think that would be so cool. You know, you, you've got to... You see the blue lights come in, you hear the sirens. You've got to hold your lane and allow them through. If you're stuck in traffic, give them, give them room to get past. I just think that would be so cool. And be aware that they're being maybe coming the opposite way in, in, the, your, in your lane. It's just wicked. I think it just bring a bit more life to it. I think the term I'm looking for. So I, I, I can't think I'm the only one who likes something like that in the game. And do you know what? I don't think there's any speed cameras for a little while, so I'm tempted to drop drop the clutch for a bit. Or is that a speed camera sign? Oh no, no, that's just a sign for the motorway. On the other side of the road, that is. Sorry, let's drop it a minute. Let's foot to the floor for a few moments. Okay, man. Let's get going. Oh, why are you slowing down? You trolling AI troll. The truck in front is not doing fifty four. Come on. Come on. Let me get to a section of road where I can overtake. It would be nice. Ah, there's actually a truck up there riding Bobtail. No trailer, which is nice. So you should be doing 80 easy. The problem is this road's not really super for overtakes on, which is a bit annoying. But lifting coast, out the fuel. If you notice, I've changed, like, well, if saying you can read it, change the centre console to fuel info. And what you'll see there is I'm averaging 41.6 litres of fuel per 100 kilometres driven. Uh, that's the fuel average, whereas at the moment I'm currently pumping out 63.2 litres per 100 kilometres driven. Lifting coast, and that will plummet to zero, so basically I am getting all this distance for free. No fuel being burnt. Little tricks like that will save you money in the game. And get you a better fuel economy and so on, which is nice. And I managed to avoid it. I managed to avoid the sign on the inside. Yay! So one of the few things I don't like about these dafts. It's the size of the mirrors. They're tiny! They really are tiny. I mean... Why are they that small? Oh, it's aerodynamic. You're in a pissing truck! It's a big slab of a thing. It's not like they've tried to shape the front of it, they've literally made it a slab. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh, I am kind of flooring at the moment, I'm trying to make up some time, if I can. Be nice. I'm going to put side lights on. As well. Oh, how long have I got till next, re next rest stop? Next rest in six hours, and I've got 16 hours to go. 
but I will technically be able to rest on the boat. So, if I can make it to the boat in less than six hours, I'm I'm sorted. No need to rest stop, which is nice. Come on. Yes, I am breaking the law at the moment and speeding. Changing lanes and getting past the Renault. Sorry. Just natural instinct to go. When I see a Renault. Blame scroll. <laughs> and that looks like a Scania. Yep. It's kind of scary playing this game. You do start to recognise trucks. And to a point where I'm recognising trucks on my way to work now. Uh, that's our Vecca Stralis and then some coach. I'm coming towards Rotterdam. There we go. Lift and coast for as long as I can. Let's get all this for free fuel mileage, which is nice. You see, look, my average fuel mileage there is now absolutely plummeting. If I do that, you can see it a lot better. And so I'm getting 41.7 litres per 100 kilometres average. Just because all this time I'm crew coasting on zero throttle, basically. And this is how to get for good fuel mileage. And later you do get bonuses for like using smaller amounts of fuel. So learning little tricks like this do help does help a lot. Let's turn the main lights on now. We definitely come into the night time. Hoping hoping, hoping, hoping that I'll be on the, the boat long enough that it will go through the night cycle and into the next day. Would be nice if it does that. Chances of it doing that, I really don't know. But I just hope it does. Make life a lot better. I hope it's a long enough boat journey as well that I get the full sleep cycle, to be honest. Oy, oh dear. That was my bad. I started with lane wandering. So yeah, it's 400 euros for just rubbing a car. Ah, oh, you swine. Do you know what I might do? I might swing into Rotterdam. Because I've kind of got time to do it. Let that car through. And just discover the dealership here. It gives me more choices when it comes to buying a truck later. This one little nifty trick you can do, because obviously you select your favourite tyler truck and you start town, and what it does is that start town has your favourite truck dealer, or the dealer for your favourite style of truck. So take this advantage while you can, to go around and see what other dealers you can find. Because more choice is always better. And the dealership is supposed to up the road a bit more. Problem is here, you can't see the traffic lights. Oh, um, oh there we go. It's a second after line of the traffic. Right, what dealership we've got in Amsterdam? This usually changes from game to game. Last time I think it was a Volvo dealership. Last time I was here. And this time it's a DAF dealership. Ah. Interesting. So I'm going to definitely know where there's a Scania and a DAF dealership later. Comes to buy my truck. 
and I'm really not taking the longest route, which is not good. Come on, Trephalites. Come on. At least I'm kind of discovering a bit more road while I'm doing this. Come on, stay green, stay green, stay green. I don't want to stop. Ah, through an amber. Say yes. Come on. And nope. Well, I hope that's going to let me go up to 80 then. But it's not. Stick 50 kph. At least I've discovered another dealership, which is good. So anyway, time to make the turning towards Rotterdam. Rotterdam. To go towards the infamous Europort. There we go, I can get this back up to motorway speeds, which is nice. Doing that little detour, only do those detours if it's not seriously going to make you late on your job. Okay, I mean, Amsterdam, I've just gone through there in like a couple of minutes. In game time, probably took me about 20 minutes to get through Amsterdam. So, that kind of little detour just to go and pick up a dealership is not a problem. Don't be doing a job to London and go, oh, I'll drive all the way to Glasgow to get a job, to get the dealership. No, bad idea. Don't do that. So, yeah. Now I'm going to take a drink. Oh, dear. I'm very dry throat, all of a sudden. And. Oh, speed camera in the tunnel. Oh, no. I can't remember there is a speed camera in this tunnel, actually. Hey, I don't think there's a speed camera, so I think, yeah, I'm okay. This bit always seems weird. Planes go over the top of the road. I think that's just a taxiway, not an actual runway. But it still just seems odd. But I think there's a... Oh, I could be wrong, but I think there's an airport in America where that happens as well. And... Germany, I remember going to stop in an airport in Germany and uh, the aircraft goes across the road there as well. It seemed very common actually, <laughs> it just seems weird though that they built this bridge so the aircraft can get across the road. <laughs> I have a feeling as well there's actually a, like, it's a small airport, it's not like a big international somewhere if a number correct it has literally a public road that goes across it and there's traffic lights a bit like you get with um train level crossings kind of thing and you have to wait <laughs> while the airplane takes off <laughs> so it's just like a bit weird in my opinion weird and we're almost at Rotterdam uh, how long till I need to rest? Four hours. It'll take me 30, 20, 30 minutes to get to the port. Game time. Uh, shall I go and pick up the dealership? Yeah. Pick up the dealership in Rotterdam. Ooh, that was close. I mischanged speeds then. Let's go pick up this dealership. Uh, 
controlled by the friggin' AI yet again. That AI could have gone many a time and it just didn't. Bloody thing. Alright, let's go and get this dealership. I think come in. It's going to take a quick. What I am thinking of doing after a certain point is taking this onto the multiplayer. And I've got a really nasty feeling this isn't actually a dealership and this is going to be a recruitment agency. Oh, that's going to serve me right. Oh no, it's a majestic dealership. Just a sneaky suspicion that was going to be a um, recruitment agency then. There is a bit of randomness to the map every so often. Every time you play. Like dealerships move and stuff. Um, not so much in the mod packs, more just the stock map. Um, things change. Depending on like what you choose. Ah, oh, damn it! I got caught speeding. I'm losing money on this job. I was seriously just not paying attention. Then that's what you get for not paying attention. You get fined. But anyway, as I was saying, I'm thinking of after a point, I might take this onto the multiplayer. That way, I won't get trolled by our AI as much. And plus, it'll kind of give you an idea how to do the multiplayer. Because I will basically show you. So, yeah. Oh. Speeding yet again. Cruise. So, I know there is some cameras on the way to the port now. They try their best to catch you out at the last minutes on the way to the port, if I remember correctly. So, I just need to be eyes open. Mainly because this drops down to 50. Sometimes it's best to do when you hit your cruise control. Let's hit it at 49 if you want a 50 cruise. That way, um, should you hit a bit of a downhill gradient, you're less, a little bit less likely to be creeping over, especially if you set on the automatic um, like deceleration. Uh, it, it just gives you a little bit of a buffer. So you don't get keep, keep getting caught out by the speed cameras. Ah, the infamous Europort. On multiplayer, avoid this place like the plague. My advice to you, you will not like this place. It's lag central and it's full of trolls. So. I always seem to just like to turn my engine off and everything, as if I'm actually going to do this properly. Uh, right, I'm going to Manchester, so I want to go to the Hull. It's an 11 hour journey, so yeah, I will sleep, which is nice. And it only cost me an extra 35, so you see my driver's fully rested. 11 hours till the next rest stop, which is nice, and I'm not that far away. Really, so, and it's put me into daytime, which is nice as well. So let's go. Must remember, drive on the left. I really should have checked my right hand side then. Just cut a truck off. Whoops. Okay, let's turn. And two hours drive to Manchester. Which is not too bad a journey. But yeah, they give you an introduction to multiplayer, 
show you how it kind of works stuff you need to know um, I'm thinking of doing an actual proper tutorial video of how to install and so on and so forth and I'm speeding and in the UK there's cameras everywhere which states people who live in the UK know that is actually true there is literally cameras absolutely everywhere they can be so that's one thing SCS has definitely, definitely got right is this shoot amount of speed cameras now I'm in KPH UK is in MPH one thing you can do is if you haven't activated the um, speed uh, current speed limit thing on the sat nav which I think comes switched on by default now I think it does I can't remember exactly if you haven't got that switched on um, one of the things I used to do as soon as I arrive in the UK is go into the settings options gameplay and then you can literally uh, where is it gone do, 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 do. Camera, no, no, no. There we go. Display region presets you can change that, or you can change length from kilometers into miles. Um, but I've got this route advisor speed limit switched on to show truck limits, and that way it stops me getting fined, and it will show me in kilometers. But if you've got miles selected, it will show you miles as well. I'm trying to see if I can see anything about this truck. No, can't see anything. Bugger. Okay. Oh well, let's keep driving. Oh, apparently I have an airbag. Interesting. It's a tr truck with an airbag. Ooh. Ooh. Messed that one up a bit. And now I'm speeding. So you see there, I've hit cruise on 63. So as soon as I've hit 64, it, I'm already off throttle. Which is a nice thing to do. Here we go, going past. Past the sea. Nice. I just noticed that you seen that little crappy old Nokia. I wonder if it does it even have the branding on it, I wonder. Moby. <laughs> so no, it hasn't got the branding on. But it is a lit that is blatantly an old Nokia. And it's what's pretending to be an old Nokia. And I'm going to claim this lane now while I can. Nice and clear for the traffic. Wise. Did I get any damage on this? I'm not recording damage. Just got fines. That's not my turning. This one's my turning coming up now. Okay, and I'm just going to try and see if I get away swinging straight in. Without losing too much speed. There we go, nicely does it. 50 mile an hour limits, that's 80 k's. But I won't get time to get up to the 80 k's, I'll have to turn off very soon. Okay, let's get this hill. Yeah, and this is my exit. See, I barely reach 50 by the time it's time to turn off. Uh, nothing coming that way. Oh, no, there is. Oh, God. I'm going to get trolled now for a while. Try and sneak my nose out a bit. See if someone starts to give away. Uh, now I 
There we go. Sometimes you just have to force your way out into traffic. Now I'm in a bit of a weird problem at the moment. I can't tell exactly how long I've been recording. Because <laughs> uh, you may notice there's a slight little bit of a jump cut back there. That's because that's something I needed to quickly do. So, um, yeah, normally I'd just be able to tell because I can record it straight off and know how, exactly how long I've taken. No, no idea. <laughs> Whoopsie. Thinking it's about 35 minutes ish. So I might do a second job. I don't know, it depends how long it take buying a truck. I definitely think I'm buying one after this. But I mean, I've got to finish this job first. The speed of this car. I'm doing 74Ks and a 64 zone. Uh oh, I forgot about that. 79Ks. Sod it. Let's keep my eyes out for speed cameras. Oh, road safety cameras. As the UK government tried to test they are. They're to notify you of a potential accident black spots. No, they don't do that. They just make money for the government. But yes. Oh, some news I found out the other day. American Truck Simulator. Apparently, it's due out February. But, and it's a big but, but it's only been released with California. So far. So you're not getting the big, full American truck simulator like we was expecting. We're literally getting California only. Now. Yes, and now I'm disappointed. I'm not too disappointed because at the end of the day, California is still a bloody big state. Yeah, the, the film creating in California, unless my geography is now failing me, you get San Francisco, Los Angeles, California. Um, I'm sure San Francisco's in California as well. I think oh, I've said that twice now, but yeah. But it's about far away. It's a reasonably large state, so it's going to be a fair bit of mileage to do. Something I've seen that they have, they are bringing into it, which is going to be interesting, is you're going to have to get your vehicle weighed. It's going to be weigh bridges. Which is kind of friggin' cool. So you go and pick up your load, and then you have to go and take your vehicle to weigh bridges to make sure they're legal. What? That is so cool. So yeah, that's something that could be quite interesting to see. Working. Um, what else is there? There's that. Um, there's going to be more difficult parking positions because, unlike with. ETS, where a lot of them is just the bays in the middle of nowhere, or there's two trailers either side. Some of the parking positions in it are literally going to be between concrete barriers, so you need to be very potentially very accurate with your parking, which is kind of cool. But also, we would be driving long noses. There will be the odd cab over, the cab over Kenworths. Uh, but otherwise it's all Peterbilt long noses which handle completely differently to a cab over so yeah one little tip I can possibly make for you download a mod that has another, a long nose you know a Peterbilt uh, a Scania T-Line anything like that mainly the American trucks I'd say because they are very very long um so things like yeah peterbilt uh there's the kenworth long nose range there's uh what's the other ones now it's not like it i can't remember the name now it is like united or something like that get hold of them one of them from the mod and practice yes you will be on european roads which are a lot narrower a lot more twisty than the American roads, but you'll get used to the idea of 
and park in a trailer. You know, distancing. I know that's basically roughly where the front of this truck is. It's basically where those windscreen wipers are. Pretty much, it doesn't stick out at all. Those things, they stick out. I mean, I've drove a mod of one before, and uh, yeah, <laughs> you have these two mirrors right at the far end that kind of cover your blind spots that are either side of your bonnet or hood, should I say. That's all they're there for is covering your blind spot there. Then you've got your wing mirrors to be able to see behind you. So just dealing with that is quite takes a bit of getting your head around. But then on top of that, with the cab over, your front steering axle is right below you. So you know that basically you can easily get the, into your head where the front of the, the you know where the steering's going what the steering's going to do. That was the term I'm trying to look for then. With a long nose, you could be sitting anywhere from four to ten feet behind the front steering axle, and it just handles completely differently. You know, steering response is going to be so much more delayed. Uh, such a longer, wider turning circle and stuff, it's just, it's a whole new driving experience so I suggest, set up another profile get hold of one of these trucks in a mod and basically buy one and see what you think um, you can add it to the existing profile just make sure you back it up um, which is something that I'll probably show you how to do when I, if I show you how to install a mod um, and that way, yeah, so you can kind of get used to the idea on how to drive one. Because it's it's an experience. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's going to take some time to learn. But it is, it is on its way. It's looking like, at the moment, a February release. Um, don't know when it's coming to Steam. I've only seen box art and a boxed version so far um, so I'm guessing it's going to come to Steam um, I don't know it might have to go for Steam Greenlight but because they've got Euro Truck Simulator 2 in there and basically Steam loves Euro Truck Simulator 2 because it sells ridiculously well all year round and even more well like crazily sells even more crazily during a uh, sales time this is one of those games that just keeps on giving <laughs> so yeah and there's no retarder on this truck I was hoping which is a bit annoying and I think I grab that dealership before I drop this load off let's get over the top of this hill first And the dealership is to the right. Oh, a little bit of a lag kick as it loads in some information. And stop. How well have I parked that? Oh, it's got feet to go. Oh well. Let's keep going. Let's go this way. Pick up this dealership. I managed to average 41.1 litres per 100 kilometres, which isn't really bad going. And uh, what kind of dealership is this? This is going to be a Scania. A Scania dealership in Manchester, which, to be honest, happens quite a lot at Manchester Scania. So this is one of the ones that doesn't seem to really change that much. Hmm. I have to double check that because I've got a feeling in one of my other profiles like Amsterdam was Volvo. Um, in fact, no I've got a feeling Manchester actually has always been Scania which is weird. 
good thing it did stop because that uh, land drive did not look like it was slowing down. Let's see, go around the island. Uh, keep in the right hand lane because this is my turning. And a swing straight in for those trucks, those cars get down here. And let's spin it round so I can get an offside reverse. Or well, near side reverse. Which would be nice. No, I don't want to auto park. When is it ever going to learn that fact that I do not want to auto park? It's got a feeling it's going to be a long distance reverse. Oh no, it's too bad. Alright, come on. Come on. Uh, oh, almost. There we go. And delivered. With an excellent rating. Yay! So there's no damage. Yay! And... Hey, I've leveled up again. So what do you guess? Straight into long distance. Apply. So now I've got 52,000 euros. Now I think it's time to purchase a truck. It's the fun part of the game. So let's see what truck deals we've got available to us. We have DAF, we have Majestic, and we have Scania. Hmm. Sorry to be predictable, but I'm going for Scania out of those options. And I'm going to buy one on UK plates. Just was why not? Is it selected Dina? Yes, I do want to buy from there. Oh. One thing I forgot. Bank loan. So bank. And let's take the 100,000 euro loan. There we go. It's going to repay in 35 days. So now let's go to the truck dealer. It's not, I have not seen the new dealerships yet. This is a new experience for me, seeing these dealerships. Is it limited to how much you can scan around? Oh, it is as well. Mm -hmm. Is it a case of click left right and you go around the other trucks? No. They all just spawn here. There's the beast. But anyway, let's start off with... Oh, there we go. Oh, pretty. I like that. That looks pretty. That's because you see around this dealership. Truck tyres. It's a marketing bump. And I guess that's a garage out the back where they can customise them and do work to and stuff like that. But anyway, let's customise the configuration. So let's start off. Well, I can only get the normal cab. Uh, I can only get 4x2 at the moment, which is not a bad problem because large fuel tanks. Uh, I'm going to get the 360 horsepower engine. I'm going for this version, the gearbox. You may see these two and wonder what the difference is. The R means it's got a retarder on, which helps with braking and slowing the truck down and just speed control in general, which is nice. So there we go. We've got the retarded gearbox. It sounds bad to say that. So that's extra 6,000 euros in Italy. Now, I'm buying the truck in the UK. Yes, it's going to try and give me right hand drive. I want left. As you've seen possibly so far, yes I've done some UK driving, most of my driving is in Europe. Go left hand drive, you will thank me in the long run, believe me. So yeah, um, paint jobs, what I'm going to do is literally go for the most cheapest of paint job at the moment because I'll customise it later. Now what accessories can I get at the moment? Bear in mind, I've got to keep an eye on this. Try and keep as much money as I can left over. Let's get a nice light bar on the go. And what can I get so far? I can get some horns. And get some spots. Which I'm going to go for the squares. Or rectangular, should I say. So rectangular spots there. Uh, I'm going to keep the stock sun visor 
Yeah, I'll keep the stock sun visor. Front bar. I'm going to go for that because I can fit some more lights onto this. 127,000 so far. 152,000 to spend. You see why I mean 100,000 euro loan is not necessarily enough. So there we go. Do I want a chin bar at the moment? No, because none of them are the chin bars I like at the moment. And at the moment I can also customise my wheels, which... Nah, it's not worth the money at the moment to customise the wheels. Can I get side skirts at the moment? No, I can't. Can I get the stock long? Yes, I can. That's uh, basically sometimes some of these sun visors will remove this stock long uh, increase the length of it so you can put bigger visors on but I like putting it on anyway even if I don't need to because it just does kind of creep out a bit more so you can see it a bit better so yeah this is my stock configurations I can't really afford a paint job at the moment uh, and I'm having to go for the standard very standard stock interior at the moment because they're not very high levels but here is my first truck so let's confirm those changes. This is what I'm buying in sheer butte. Well, should be better looking with side skirts and everything, but yeah, beggars can't be choosers. So this is my Scania R Series 360 brake horsepower engine, and I am going to purchase it. 130,000 euros. Thank you for buying truck. Here we go. Let's go and check this out. Now you'll get automatically thrown to your um, home garage if I'm buying your truck and you get these beauty shots of your truck which when they're stock almost like this ain't so pretty but either way it's a proud moment when you have your first truck and this is your garage where you can store it in and just deal with things I have my truck Yay! Let's put it on German plates. No! Oh, well, so to get UK plates. One thing you can do is if you sign up for World of Trucks, the World of Trucks site, which I think it's worldoftrucks.com, um, and then link your, your truck profile to that, you can online set a custom license plate, um, which I could show you in a moment. So, yeah, you can have a customized plate that basically says whatever you want. But here is my truck, and I'm just going to literally just take it around the block, see what it's like. Ooh. And this starts the beginning of my major truck in Empire. And I need to sort out my seat last time because I would need to sort that out later. And also one thing, click these, yes it's daylight at the moment, click them now because the minute you turn the lights on, they will come on. And I'm going to possibly just briefly adjust those mirrors, so I'll we run that one. So I'd like to just kind of scan it down a bit and small left. Just try and do that with it. That front mirror. Let's see if we can just get a better view of the front of the truck. And there we go. Nice to possibly actually get that front corner if I can. Uh, there we go. That side is, yeah, well, there's not much point doing that one. <laughs> and the convex side mirror. Try and just give me a bit more of it view like that and as I'm going to take this quickly around the block just to quickly break it in give us first a little bit of mileage uh, okay let's go now you get come with it upon buying it a full tank of fuel and obviously it's pristine
but it's up to you to refuel it from now on. It's up to you to deal with any repairs from now on. Now you can see I have 50,000 euros. I now have 21,000. I'm going to be losing so many thousand euros a day because of the loan. I can't remember the top of my head exactly how much. And you're going to get a weird experience of driving Bobtail for the first time. Driving Bobtail is a whole weird different experience because you've got no weight holding you back. You can be breaking the speed limit in seconds and not realise it. And you have to treat corners totally differently because of the fact of how this thing handles, it's so easy to flip it because there's no weight on the back. So, one thing to do is yeah, literally do what I'm doing take it around the block once, get a feel for it. Now, your first truck is going to be underpowered. You may not like it at first because you want to pull the big ass loads and you can't. But level up it doesn't take very long to level up, to be honest, once you start on the big money jobs and you own your own truck, you level up a lot quicker. And uh, before you know it, you know, you will be getting the opportunity to buy bigger engines, you've been earning more money from bigger jobs. I mean, yeah, the biggest job I've done so far was like 17,000 euros, wasn't it, something like that? 7,000 euros or something. Um, I'll have a look at the job market just before I end this because I'm only doing one journey in this one because I brought the truck. Oh, and I'm going to park it up in my garage in a minute. I'm literally just taking it around the block because it's new. Look at that, it's, it's very majestic of a truck. And let's do it. There we go. H, Torn, N, Air Horns. Remember that one? And J is to flash your lights. Which obviously I won't do too much. But just remember those. And that's all your horns sorted then. Took me a long time to figure out about the air horns. For ages I kept pressing H and going, well those horns don't make any difference. What's the difference between screamers and roars and thunders and all that lot? And then I realised, uh oh, there's a different button. Whoops. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll turn it left on her. That was the plan to turn left anyway. And all I'm gonna do is freshly rest up my driver. Ready for the next episode. Well I say that it doesn't need too much of a rest at the moment. Why am I getting caught by every set of traffic lights around the block? I really don't know. But that's it, I'm bringing this episode to a close. Next episode, we'll be doing our first job in the truck, in the Scania. Look at that, my garage door's open nicely for me as well. I'm going to pull in, and then I'm going to park it up. I'll have a look around in my truck. Uh, let's have a look, Can I look out there, look down there. Ooh, wheels kind of have a shine to them, the stock wheels. Yeah, it looks very nice indeed, very nice and dead. Let's just have a quick look on the outside of it. Now I'm in here. Look at that. And that handsome beast. Shame about the Dutch. Dutch? German. Number plates. Ah. Apparently I'm playing music in my garage. Didn't realise that. So yes, that is the end of my episode, for episode 4, I think I agreed it was in the end. Until next time. Oh, that's so cute, Orny. That's your I'm going to start my engine up just so you can see these lights. Oh, okay, now they've come on, just to annoy me. Till next time, see you then, have fun driving. Bye bye!